Hey guys, it's Nautica and I'm back with another video. So one of you guys actually came to me and asked me um, about, you know, how you can have your art not look so flat. Um, I see that this person was struggling with their art looking flat, although they're trying to make it look kind of three-dimensional with some dimensions, something like this drawing. And my voice is a bit raspy, so if I, I'm gonna probably be drinking water during this tutorial because I've been filming a lot. So yeah, I decided to write down a couple tips and stuff like that so I can have you guys have your art look not so flat. And if your art style is kind of you know 2D, I'm not talking about you. Or if you draw in a very or color in a very 2D style, I'm also I'm also not talking about you. So this does not apply to you. I'm talking to those who want to create a. Um, those who want to create a 2D looking, I say, I guess, character or something along that line. I'm, I won't, sorry. I'm talking to those who want to create, you know, 3D looking characters, but currently their art looks very 2D, so, um, or flat, um, sort of say. So a lot of times this actually stems from, um, you... In your head you're thinking of shapes as very two-dimensional objects so usually if you do have an art class or you ever took an art class um, your art teacher will have you basically draw out three-dimensional shapes and and shape them so this is actually kind of like the um, kind of foundation of not having your artwork look so flat so I was just thinking about that I was like wow you know now that I think about it my, there's a reason why my art teacher made me draw those annoying um, cubes, um, cylinders, and cones all the time. And you know, a lot of the time repetition is the best thing. So think about that. Actually start, avoid working with the um, very two-dimensional objects like uh, shapes, my bad, two-dimensional shapes like um, squares, circles, and you know, rectangles like that if you want to improve your 3D skills and, and work towards more of um, 3D shapes like, you know, cubes, cylinders, um, cones, and you know, stuff along, along that line. So this is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, so try to do a couple exercises like these. This would actually help you a lot. I'm honestly, I'm just, I'm being honest, like, I know it sounds like something that is a little repetitive, especially if you did it in school, but there's a reason why uh, you end up learning how to do these uh, certain things. Um, also study shadows and stuff like that, because right now like I kind of forgot how shadows go. Well, no, is it? No, the shadow is in a, a little, um, this one's a square, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, that pen sucks well this pen sucks and we're not gonna use it anymore so yeah like I said before try to work on shadows shapes and different things like that work on more 3d shapes rather than 2d shapes I'm gonna put in an X an X right here and a check over here so also like I said before you know how you draw the um, you start off drawing a face or the way I start off drawing a face um, a lot of the times I see people in beginning artists they'll end up drawing their faces like this like like no what is no 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 usually when you Okay. Usually if I was to draw something from three fourths view, I'd go with something more along the lines of um of this of this rather than that. Because right here because usually the circle indicates a cylinder, uh, which already gives your drawing a more of a a three dimensional it gives your your drawing more of a three-dimensional feel feel and it makes no sense honestly okay let's say if I was to actually put some eyes 
right here on this character and they are they are currently in three fourths view it makes absolute look look how weird this looks it makes absolutely no sense look at that the eyes are no matter what the eyes are going to be even if it's in three fourths view and you're using very straight lines to be your guidelines the eyes are going to be even that that makes no sense like when you turn your head to the side or like slightly to the side are both your eyes the same are they are they the same um do they look the same when they look at someone no usually one is kind of more slightly curved not necessarily slightly curved but more angled yes yeah, more angled than the other one so something something along the lines of like this like this one's a lot smaller and this one's a lot bigger now that's a lot more believable you see than that that, that look that is more for a front facing view um that particular guideline so like I said before, just just think about things in a three-dimensional shape rather than a two-dimensional shape because it will benefit you in the long run. This is like, I don't know what that is. That is the American How to Draw book. Like that, that that's nice. An exception of some of them. Some some American How to Draw books are pretty nice. Um, but uh, that's that's no, that's an abomination. Um, same thing. I'm gonna go in with like, let's say, uh, let's do some legs over here. Um, we're gonna go in with uh, some legs. Let's draw a girl's legs. Let's draw some legs. Draw a butt because you know, might as well. Draw a butt and let's draw. Well, that is a really long um, thing for a butt. But you see that? Like I, I just drew don't mind the butt just just look at the legs like don't mind the butt look at the legs but um when you do break down these shapes you can break them down into cylinders like you can actually break the, the um the shape of the leg down into a cylinder so look at that you see that just just like that it has some sort of curve to it break things down into shapes uh, break arms down into shape break the legs down into shape um, a lot of times you break legs down into like um legs and arms if you have to break the legs and arms down into cylinders then do so if that helps you out break them down into cylinders right here and i'm gonna draw a spear right here right there so the next thing is shading and highlights I nearly spelled that wrong but yeah so the next thing is shading and highlights so basically for any object so if you were to draw anything let's say I'm going to let's, let's grab this let's grab this and let's grab this um this I don't I don't know what that is <laughs> let's grab the cube really simple cube so a lot of times for shading and highlight you honestly want to start off uh, you basically want to start off like this for shading and highlighting start off um, start off with lines and you can actually look up uh, different lines such as uh, hatching cross hatching hatching cross hatching I'm not going to go through all of it but these are the main ones that I use and a lot of times you use these lines in order to create some sort of depth um, but I'm going to use this in order to create color I'm, I'm going to try to use shading and highlight with the uh, color right now so i'm gonna use uh let's just use some pinks i'm gonna use a couple of these colors down here i'm gonna use a purple also so a lot of the times artists tend to stick with uh, three to four colors when initially they tend to stick with three to four colors so a lot of times you have your base color which is the lightest color that you're going to use so for my lightest color we're going to use r 83 trying to see if i'm still in frame R83, so we're gonna go around this. I'm not really gonna make it the most perfect thing in the world, but 
Yeah, we're gonna use RA3, all right? RA3, our next color, which I'm probably gonna use this one next, is going to be, it's gonna be R85, which is a, this is a Copic marker if anyone has any questions. R85. And you see how it's already starting to look like a um, a three-dimensional character, uh, not characters, a three-dimensional um, shape already. Um, let's see, this is darker. This is darker or lighter. That's a little darker. I'm using R34 for another darker shade. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go in with the V15. So a lot of times you... Um, can use another color from a color family to create contrast contrast is your best friend and I'm gonna point here contrast so you can choose another color from a color family which complements the um, well it can complement yeah that complements the uh, initial color that you're using the initial color family that you're using to create contrast and um, depth and stuff like that so you know it looks nice with all the pinks right here but when you do add that purple it does give it a more of a it gives it does give the spear itself and it's not necessarily a spear if you don't have any um i don't have any shading right here well i, I mean i didn't really create that much that actually sucks why did i do that um yeah You see how much nicer that looks? It it looks like it actually looks like a spear with a bit of um with a bit of dimension. And I know my spear is kind of janky, like okay, but uh, that that's what we're doing right now. And I know my my um my what is it called? Highlight. My shadow is a little janky too, but it's a little janky right now because. I'm working kind of fast okay but for the most part like look at that also you might need to understand where um where light comes from light comes from when it comes down to these shapes and where to add your darkness and where to add your shadows same thing here but I'm actually just gonna use the same example over here with the um, with the um, actual initial line so actually practicing lines will actually help you a lot when it comes down to creating um let's say more three-dimensional figures and three-dimensional shapes I honestly recommend you to try to practice a lot with lines and study uh, color theory when it comes down to stuff like this um, it will help you maybe like the basics of color theory like you know um playing around with different uh complementary colors you know stuff like that so just just try your best to try your best to just you know try your best to learn a lot more when it comes down to stuff like this it'll actually open your eyes a lot to um different shapes and and stuff like that i've it's been a long time guys like I swear it has <laughs> it's been a very long time I believe this is how we do it I hope so because if not you guys are gonna roast me in the comments I forgot the shapes of the shadows, but study that too. Don't be like me and forget the shapes of shadows, okay? But yeah, so this is pretty much it. Hopefully this was a little helpful. Like I said before, stay away from two-dimensional shapes unless this is your style. Um, if you want to focus on not drawing flat, focus on three-dimensional shapes. Um, apply it to your artwork such as here and here um legs and legs and arms think of those as cylinders uh try to start off with using lines which is you know cross hatching hatching whatever you use to create your shading highlight um and also 
try to work with color focus on your dark light shadows and focus on contrast also um and that will go into kind of into color theory but you know we i didn't make a video on color theory anyway so this is pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully it was helpful and i will talk to you guys in another video um i do have this as a pdf on my patreon so if you want to support me on patreon the link is in the description box below and this is pretty much it and i will talk to you guys in another video bye